Okay, so welcome to the peer meeting. This meeting is called to order. Do I have a second on that one? Thank you, Kim. Okay, so um, the first thing on the agenda is we need a volunteer for the PA, um, the graduation that's coming up in, on June 24th. We're looking between 10 to 20 parents to do setup. And if you can just send me your name and contact number, I can pass it on um, to Miss Miss O'Neill and we can get um, that going. Uh, but someone enable the chat. There is we cannot send you anything. Uh, don't send me. Don't send it to me in the chat. Please send me an email to the president email address. Thank you. And what is the event? This is for the PA. This is for the graduation um, that's coming up on June twenty fourth. So this is to help set up, um, you know, set up for um, for students, basically, just uh, you know, just doing setup. Okay. Um, next, we want to talk about the bylaw. So we have updated the um, the bylaw, and basically, it's now online on the PA website, and you can basically go there and take a look on the PA website. And basically what was updated in the bylaw was what the chance, the new chancellor information that, that was posted um, for the 501. And that include um, word and address and corporate sponsors, um, corporate requirements that's included. Um, basically what I need from you guys is to go through the bylaw and take a look at it and get back to me a week before the next PA meeting. Um, the next PA meeting, um, do anybody know what the next PA meeting is? I lost it off my agenda here. Um, I was, you know, but we need that before the, you know, a week before the next PA meeting in April. So if you guys have any, see anything or need explaining on some of those stuff, please get in touch with us and we can uh, make any modification needed. Now for the election, we have um, we need people to join the PA e board. And here's what happened: if we don't have a president, a treasurer, or a recording secretary, there won't be any PA. In other words, the PA is going to end when I leave. So if you guys do not want that to happen, we need to get people involved. Um, you guys, you know, there are always co. Um, running together. You don't have to do it by yourself. I mean, I'm doing the mines by myself, but you know, who knows? I'm just that crazy anyway. So basically you can run together as, as, as a team. And you know, you guys are the one that get things done in the school. Um, you can force the principal to do, you know, stuff. Um, so that's what we need you guys for. We, we do need this. And every position is open. So, you know, keep in mind, I am leaving in June. Basically, uh, June 24th, I'm done. So, um, so basically, I need you guys to step up and join. There's, it's not difficult to do. You know, it's yes, it's time consuming, but it's not difficult. And as I said, you guys can work as a team. I just need names, contact information. And so we can move forward. We need this. Um, I need this information before the next election. So the next election coming up is at the May um, PA meeting. Okay. So um, if you guys not running, no president, no PA, everything ends. And you guys, the student is going to be the one that's suffering. It's your kids that's going to suffer. Okay. You know, technically, my kid is out of there and I'm gone. So, you know, for you guys need to step up. I can't, you know, express more than I can right at this point in time. So please, we need you to join. Just like how you guys donate, um, you know, funds to get stuff going. We need you to um, donate your time. You know, I work in New Jersey. I have to rush back and get here in time for this meeting. So, you know, basically 
um, you know, you guys can basically do do that. Um, it's not difficult. And I think I beat this to death right now. So let's move on. But please, you know, send me a name, um, your contact number, what position you want to run for. Um, there, there would be an official um, uh, information sent out for you guys to sign up for um, and the position. But I, you know, I just need someone to train as a president coming up because there's a lot of stuff that I want to pass on to you. And it will be nice to at least, you know, get you guys, you know, on board just to, you know, just to see what I do. I uh, want to see what they, you know, what any of us do. You know, we just need you guys to be on board for that one. And, you know, that's it. Okay, so um, that's it on the election. But please, I, we do need you. I do not want to see the PA end. You know, there's kids out there that do need your help. Your children need your help. And uh, I think I beat this enough now. So let's move on. So I'd like to thank... Um, you know, my VP for event, um, Sarah, she did a pretty good job in, you know, doing the workshop. And uh, for you guys who missed the workshop, um, there is, um, it's actually streaming on YouTube right now. So you guys can see what's missed. And there's a new, there's another workshop coming up. And so I'm going to let um, um, Sarah explain when, you know, when, when, when's her term. Um, but I thank um, Samantha and Chris for volunteering um, for, you know, you know, helping out with the workshop and all, you know, going. Um, I'd like to thank um, Patricia. I keep thanking Patricia. She's the one, she's my fundraising king and queen. You know, she did um, a great job in getting stuff going. We were able to raise enough money to um, to help the student. We helped the clubs. We helped the, um, uh, the music department. Uh, you know, so we do need your help. Um, we supply papers for printers, you know, because, you know, there's some issue going on, but we do need, um, you know, fundraising and Patricia is doing a pretty good job. And I'd like to thank you for that. And also Mary for, you know, helping us getting things together, um, you know, receiving all those donations, you know, not donations, but receiving all those stuff we purchased and, you know, distributed them to the right teachers and for the students to use. And Mary, thank you. Um, you did a great job. And basically, you know, we need you to continue when I'm gone. Okay. So thank you, Mary. So Michelle um, is our treasurer. So you want to do like a quick overall of um, the review, the treasurer report, budget. Um, do I have Michelle? Yes, hi, good evening, everyone. Let me, uh, now you can access the treasury report for the month of February. It's, it's now in the chat. You can um, view the report. Yeah, we can see the report, Michelle. I got it up. I, I, I did it. It's in the chat. Yeah. Uh, so as you can see from the report, uh, we actually able to run, uh, raise a, um, about 10580 for the month of February. And uh, that's basically the, uh, the revenue section. And then when we move down to the expenditure, you will see there's a, um, uh, a monthly uh, credit card fee. Basically, that is the for, the for the previous month. So... And next to that is the Lunar New Year event that we are uh, paying out for the price, the, the raffle pipe price. So that is what about it. That's, that's what it is about. And then we're moving to the program expense. That basically, this is like we're paying for, uh, as you can see from the uh, chart of the account, the title. So we're paying for club team, we're paying for the next item is we're paying for the classroom enrichment. So these are the uh, who's supporting the school, the teacher, and the classroom for all the need that they need. And the so then we also support there's a, a, a drama class that they they uh, we also support their um, 
technique there. Then moving on that. So we're moving into the operating expense. So we find- Are you sharing your screen now, because we can't see anything? Now. It's in the chat. Um, we, we put it in chat. So if you can click on the link that's in the chat, you can actually see what she's talking about. Okay, so in the operating expenses, the accounting fee, uh, 1100 there. So this is the fee that we're paying for um, the PA, PA actually following uh, the, the um, tax for last fiscal school year. So that is for, that's to wrap up the, the, uh, all the activity that taking place during the month of February. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Michelle. Yeah. Uh, I did a quick um, brought it up in it and just to share. So this is basically the um, the fund um, the budget that we have, and it's posted in the chat. So you guys can literally um, click on the link. It's also on the website. Everything. So um, please take a look at it, and uh, that's it. Okay. So let's move on. Thanks, Michelle. Um, Sarah, um, you know, the workshop coming up, do you have anything you want to announce? Do we have Sarah on? Did we lose Sarah? We may have lost Sarah. She was here. Okay. Yeah, no, she was. Okay. So let me jump in there if Sarah's not around. Okay. So on April 5th, we have a workshop that's coming up, a parents workshop. Uh, so this, um, so this would be also stream um, on YouTube, but we would like you to join us live because um, basically you can ask your questions and all your questions will get answered. So please join us on April 5th, that's a Saturday, and uh, for you know the next parent workshop that's coming up. Um, Pat, we got you, Family Appeal. No, it's going to be me. Patricia's not here. Oh, okay. So, Go ahead. Hi, everyone. First of all, I want to thank everyone for whatever that they donated. Um, no amount is too small. It's all very much appreciated. As Lincoln mentioned, Patricia set up this phenomenal family appeal where if we hit 40% of our parents and our families donating to this appeal, any amount, if we can say that 40% of our families have donated, we have a donor that will match us, not match us, but will donate $20,000, no matter how much we raise, as long as we hit 40%. Currently, we're at 24%. And, you know, we really want to keep the momentum going because this is a great way to earn another $20,000. And we wholeheartedly thank everybody who has donated. And I will put the information in the chat about the different ways that you, how you could donate, be it check or online. And thank you. And just remember, the suggested amount is $600 per student, but any amount, $5, $10, whatever anyone could give is very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna jump to Mel. Is Mel and Judy around? They could talk on um, the graduation. Judy's here, hi. Hey, Judy. Hi, so two topics, senior prom and graduation. So senior prom, um, everybody should have seen the uh, emails coming around, I believe it's it's in the daily announcements and in a few other different announcements. Uh, senior prom is June 4th being held at Pier 60. Uh, the tickets are on sale now until March 31st, they're $185. After that, uh, they'll be on sale from April 1st to the 14th, but the price goes up to 220. So it's an early bird special until March 31st, and that is per ticket. So if uh, if you're bringing a guest, it's going to be double that amount. Uh, seniors are allowed to bring one guest. They have to be high school age or no older than 20. Uh, and there's also a permission slip that has to be filled out for senior prom. So, And it needs to be signed by the COSA office. So please make sure that your senior does that and that you pay for it um, within the time frame because there's no extensions on the timing. And they expect it to sell out because it's prom and who doesn't want to go to their prom, right? Uh, next is graduation, which is going to be June 24th at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. We are looking for volunteers, which I think, Mel, I, 
I, Lincoln, I mean, I think I joined a few minutes late, so apologies. I'm not sure if you covered yeah. meeting volunteers or not. <clears throat> but, okay. uh, but the, uh, the graduation is June 24th. It's from noon to three. It's three hour running time. Uh, there'll be a program that will be following, but it starts at noon. Uh, seniors should be there around 1030 so that they can find their place uh, where they're supposed to be sitting. They should have already ordered their caps and gowns. Um, and uh, families should be let in, I think, about an hour before. So around 11 o'clock, I believe, you'll be allowed to go in to find your seat for general admission. As far as graduation itself, they're looking for some volunteers to help set up a few different things, trying to set up a photo area with an extended place, trying to set up some different banners. We're also trying to put together a montage for the 100 year anniversary, and they're looking for uh, photos of the building over the last 100 years. If anybody's aware of anything or knows of a little treasure trove of photos, please let Miss O'Neill know. You can reach out to me and I can put you in contact with her. Um, but please keep that in mind. But again, if you're a senior parent looking to volunteer, or you just want to volunteer for graduation, please reach out to Miss O'Neill or you can reach out to myself to reach out to me and, and I can put you in touch with Miss O'Neill. Um, we just need some, some volunteers to help set up. Yeah, Judy, I yes. can you hear me? I thought that this might be a really great opportunity for junior parents to volunteer at the senior graduation so that they kind of get an idea, you know, of the space. But also, could you tell us the volunteer hours? Like what time do you need the volunteers? Still figuring it out. Tentatively, they were saying 8 a.m. so that we could get everything done quickly. Hopefully it's not, I'm hoping it's not earlier than that for personal reasons, um, but I believe it's at eight o'clock so that we're done in time for everybody. They need all hands that they can get. Um, but it's, you know, it's out at the stadium. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right, Judy, I got a question for you. Um, is there an issue if a student is having um, failing, failing grades for the, to attend the prom? Oh, there are requirements that are out. Thank you for raising that. If you look at the BTH and, uh, BTHS daily announcements, uh, there's an FAQ link in there on the prom, and it does say that you have to have certain requirements, I believe, to attend prom, um, but look to that, uh, and that would be a question more for uh, Ms. O'Neill and uh, or Mr. Newman, Principal Newman, but I believe it's also in the FAQs. Okay. I'm Definitely. trying to scan it quickly now to see if I can see it. But I think, I know for graduation, definitely you have to be in good standing. And I believe for prom, you have to be in good standing as well. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Okay. Uh, Mary, do you want to say something real quick? Sure. First of all, I, I just was in the production of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And it was terrific. And I hope everybody goes. And you can sort of see the picture that I took during the performance behind me. I only took the pictures for like 30 seconds so I could, you know, it was an obnoxious snapping the whole time. But it's really joyful and I really hope you all go because it was just, it was great. It was really fun and so great to see these kids before me again and seeing the auditorium open. And I think this weekend it's going to be really fun. So um, everybody go and bring people. Um, I also wanted to thank the PA for doing the teacher's wish list, um, uh, Shani and Michelle organizing it. It's been, it's been like Christmas in July or whatever we are um, in my office. And, um, and these are such like simple things that they're asked for, like spiral notebooks for their kids or, you know, planners and, and just ridiculous things that they should all have. They're all very excited about clickers for like the screens, you know, and it's just, they're really happy and, and it's, it's just great. Um, so it was really, really, really wonderful for them to get all that. Now everyone has, um, I hope everyone has gotten the um, parent teacher conference signups. Um, uh, there's been some grumbling about uh, keeping the conferences at five instead of just all, all you can eat. Um, but I've been explaining to people that each teacher has about 160 or 170 students and each teacher only has 40 slots or so for the parent teacher conferences. 
At a small school, you can do this. They can usually meet everyone, but a school like this size, they just can't. And um, a lot of parents were shut out last in the fall um, because everything filled up so quickly. Um, so hope, we're just trying to like let more people talk to more people um, this year. And um, if it if it appears that their you know teacher schedules are still empty, then we can add some more slots at the end. But right now, just, you know, I appreciate your understanding that we're trying to let all the parents um, uh, schedule some appointments or teachers. Um, the other thing is that the DOE and probably the uh, UFT um, limit the conferences to two, these two days. So the afternoon and the evening, and that's it. And it, again, in a smaller school, that's probably enough time, but here it's impossible to do all those conferences in those that amount of time. So if you don't get an appointment with your teacher that you want to speak with, with your child's teacher, then you can contact the teacher directly and make an appointment outside the conference. Um, same with the guidance counselors, you know, anyone. Um, and also the other thing is don't make any... Uh, appointments to the lab or um, advisors, because the labs just like, they just have to show up to the class, to the lab and do the work. They don't get graded. It's the, um, you know, the physics teacher, the chemistry teacher you need to be speaking with, not the lab teacher. And that will also open up some spots for everyone. Um, so that's it. Thanks. Thanks all for doing everything you do. Okay. Any Thank questions you. on that? Should take any questions on that? Because if you have any, I'll take some. Sure. Uh, one person um, said, uh, can you repeat how many students they have? I guess referring to the team. Oh, I think it's like 160 students each. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Joseph is saying, is there um, any talk about bringing back the annual fundraiser this year or not? Usually held at a restaurant in May. Uh, Susan, do you know anything about Yes, I know that we're not, unfortunately, we're not doing anything. These things take a really, really long time to plan and it needs to be done very thoughtfully. And there's no, the, the actual place where we were supposed to have it two years ago shut down. So we were able to get about 60% of our deposit back. Um, but, you know, what if it's an auction, you need time to get items. We need time to publicize it. And we need time to plan a thoughtfully, um, a thoughtful great event. So unfortunately, this year, there will be no um, fundraiser, be it an auction or anything else. And ditto the conferences, the um, it's the DOE that says we can't have live conferences. So we're just waiting for that word also. And so hopefully next, next year, this will all be back to normal, whatever normal is at that point in time. Exactly. But everyone wants to see people and everyone wants to have parents here. And you know, it's not our, it's not, we don't want to shut people out. Right. Okay. So um, I have a question. There's a question that pops up in an email there. Um, I think. So this one, um, parents is asking about scheduling. Uh, while, you know, if students is taking SAT or, or AP, can, um, you know, can they you know, reschedule, do Zoom classes, you know, instead of, you know, coming a late after. But basically, um, I was told the DOE does not, um, will not allow um, Zoom class anymore. So that will not happen um, based on um, what I was told in an email here that just came in, was asking that question, but I was told there were, and the, DOE, with the DOE will not allow Zoom class anymore, unless you're COVID positive or um, sick. That's the only way. But any um, for SAT rescheduling on test days, you um, you'd have to come in as you know as scheduled. Because um, the person saying that their child is you know, lived you know pretty far and it's just ridiculous coming in at you know coming in for that short period of time. But that's you know, that's what we, uh, I was told. And that, uh, that answered that question. Okay. Um, raising juniors are the class per assigned. How does one select elective? Um, 
So, uh, is Mr. Newman on yet? No, I don't think he's on yet, right? No, I think we might want to save some of these questions uh, until um, we have Mr. Yeah. Newman here. Mr. Newman, yeah. Okay. All right. So, let me go back to my schedule here. Okay. I'm hey, looking for. Lincoln, I can yes. answer that one question. I put it in the chat, but just in case people didn't see it, the question was about um, seniors attending prom if they're failing a class. In the FAQs, it says that um, more than if you're if a senior is failing more than two classes this marking period, they can't attend. So it has to be more than two classes for this marking period. But look at the FAQs. But it does speak to it. Okay, so the, uh, and we're in the second marking period at this point in time. So you guys can, um, you have two options. You can check um, pupil pad or you can go to the DOE site and literally see um, the grade. Okay, so while well, we're ahead of my schedule here, I'm waiting for my guest speaker to join. He, um, he'll be coming in in a moment. Okay, so, uh, so let me sing and dance here for a moment. Lincoln, so what, what is, what, what is uh, your speaker's name so I can keep a look for him? Uh, is Dr. Reed um, and Deanna, Deanne Reed, I believe. Yeah. So, yes, he's he, um, he, um, on his way here. Okay, so let's go back to one thing here, the election. So I'm asking people to, to, do, you know, to donate your time for the election. We, you know, everything is open. Um, you know, we have, um, we're losing senior parents. Um, you're losing a president because we're all leaving because our time expired. I would love to stay back. Um, I was offered, you know, a parent offered me a couple of kids, you know, which is nice, but no, nah, no thanks. Um, you know, I got my, you know, we, we need to, you know, for you guys to come on board, jump in, sign up, um, support us. Um, technically, you know, as I said, I, I work in New Jersey. I work all the way, oh my God, um, you know, you know, close to Azalek. And, you know, that's exit 114 off the Garden State Parkway. Or you have to take Route 35, you know, past Azalek there. So, you know, and I live right on the border of Valley Stream and Queens. Well, I'm technically in Queens. So, as you can see, it's a long ride, you know, you know, every day trying to get to work and, uh, you know, to get back here to, you know, to host a meeting, to have conference with, you know, with committees. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, you know, doing it all by myself. But, you know, you guys know I'm technically, I'm kind of crazy there, but you guys don't have to do this all by yourself. You guys can, you know, work with, um, run with a, a co-person, um, you guys can split the work. Um, the previous, um, you know, um, president, that's what they did. You know, they split the work between, you know, two person, you can do this. Um, you know, as I said, I'm crazy enough to take things on. You know, I love the challenge. Um, so, you know, and it turned out to be much easier because I got like a nice, a great team. Um, Susan, Patricia, um, Kim, Vito, Shani, Michelle, um, Sarah, Chris, and Mel. You know, we, I got a great team and basically everybody pitched in. Um, there is nothing where I can say, hey, um, you know, actual help and somebody would pitch in. Maya, the communication, she did a great job. I mean, if I miss something, she will always send me a text and say, I think, and yeah, I didn't submit um, information. You know, we need it. So it's a great team. So once you guys work together, um, you know, we can, you can do great things. I am telling you guys would be, you know, don't do this all by yourself. I mean, I, you know, I thought I could do this all by myself. You know, that's one thing I was thinking. But, you know, once I get the team together and I realize, hey, I can't do this by myself. I need, um, you know, a team. And you know, where we all fit in to do the do the work together. Um, okay, I am having an issue with my computer here. My, you know, but thank you, 
Lincoln, we have a question. Um, we, yes. we had a parent who was considering with uh, working with two other recording secretaries. The most we can have for those positions, it's it just two people. Two, yes. That that's it. Right now we have we have Vito and Chris as recording secretaries, so it, it couldn't be be three people. But please still consider joining the board. But I just wanted to let you know that it, it would be it would be a limit of two. And then Mark has a question that that would come to me. Uh, can you please tell us the date and time for the next diversity committee meeting? We don't have one scheduled currently. Um, right now, um, we've been. We did the Lunar New Year. Right now, we've been doing a lot with the, the Social Justice Racial Equity Book Club. And probably in the next Tech Talk, we'll be announcing the book club meeting. And after that, we will try and get a meeting together because we'd like to do a couple more things before the end of the school year. So keep look. Um, if we have a meeting, it'll be in Tech Talk. And we will also send a standalone in case you miss it in Tech Talk when we have the next diversity meeting. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, everybody, there's only two person can run for each um, each, each office. Um, so it's technically, you know, it can be done. You guys, you know, just sign up, you know, you won't be like left in the cold. Um, you know, I'm willing to work with the new president coming in. And, uh, you know, there's, there's stuff that I need to pass on there. You know, it has to be done. Uh, so that's the reason why I, you know, the bylaw is updated so we can have the election um, a little earlier than in May because, you know, it's too close for the end of the, the year, um, the school year, to try to have an election. But, you know, try to, we, we want to do it in, in like in April so that we get the new team on board, you know, get everybody up to speed what needs to be done and uh, not try to rush, 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 and get everything you know, in, a, in a short time. But if I can get someone named who wants to be president or co-president, you know, I can literally start prepping you guys on board to see what can be done. Look, I'm telling you, you guys, you know, you guys have a lot of power. You just don't know it. You do. You know, you can go to Mr. Newman and say, hey, look, you know, you, you, know, you got to change this. And, you know, you guys can fight to get it done. You can work with the SLT to get things done. Remember, the president is automatically goes, you know, put on the SLT. So you guys, you know, I'm telling you, you guys have a lot of power that you can exercise. And, uh, you know, it has to be done. Your kids are there. There is, um, there's no where you want to leave your kids out in the cold and not help out. So, you know, please join, um, you know, fight for your kid. You know, this is what you need to, you know, to get done. And, uh, you know, I'm stressing as much as I can do because I don't see anybody, you know, sending me their name, saying they want to join. And it's kind of, it, it breaks my heart because I don't want to be the one, you um, that is, you know, I don't want to PAN with me. We definitely not, um, you know. So please, please join. So for the SLT election, um, yes, Bruno, we 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 are we are we're trying to host um, both elections at the same time. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna do it in May. It's gonna be at the May. Uh, meeting. So I'm trying to give everybody heads up that we're going to, you know, we're going to announce the actual date, the election, and to get that, you know, going. So we do need, I do need you guys to, you know, to jump in and, you know, work, um, you know, work with, work with us. Um, it's, you know, yeah, it's it's very difficult, you know, not to have a PA at Brooklyn Tech. Uh, we, you know, you know, you guys can, you know, look at the bylaws. You guys can work with, um, you know, what you need to change in the bylaws. You guys, you know, as long as you bring in the chancellor request, um, you know, you can you work with the teachers. You know, you get into the school. You know what's going on. And you can talk to the teachers, you know, 
And basically, it's, you know, you guys have a lot of power. That's all I can tell you guys. You got the power. Use it. Um, don't let it end. Uh, so uh, I think I stressed enough. And, you know, it's just heartbroken when, you know, nobody steps up. Uh, you know, so I wish I could be here longer, but I got to go. And, you know, my ticket is all set for me to go. So, you know, please do. And so for senior parents, um, I know you guys are getting, are getting information, um, accepting a letter already and with financial stuff. I do, I got one, you know. So I've been looking at mine and I'm saying, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, it's ridiculous, you know, what they're offering. So I'm technically what I'm doing is I'm going back to the school and say, look, you know, you guys, you know, you know, you guys have enough, um, you know, money to make, you know, contribute more to my child coming to your college, you know, your university. I'm not going to tell you what university it is, but, you know, it's, you know, you guys, you know, this is something you guys can do. So if you guys get that letter, read it carefully. You know, make sure you know what's a loan and what's a grant. It's two different things. And, uh, you know, the way I looked at mine, I did not, you know, it was difficult for me to figure out what, what the grant was and what the loan was. And once I called the, you know, the financial person, I said, look, you know, explain what this letter, you know, what, what it was the difference here, because I could not, this you know figure which was the loan and the grant. So once they explained to me what the you know what the loan was and what the grant was, I said, look, this is ridiculous. You guys have to make more more changes on you know what was given. Um, look, the only thing that they could say to you is no, you know, but they didn't tell me no. They you know they gave me oh we can take a look at it and get back to you. <laughs> so I'm you know open that they get back to me with you know something you know a change. I mean, they will, they, you know, they probably will. But as I said, don't accept that letter as, you know, as the final notice, you know, it, it's not, you know, they can make changes. You can fight for more and, uh, you know, they're going to ask you for, you know, more information, but, you know, fight for more. Don't just take it, you know, just do. And for the, the junior parents that's coming up, you know, you guys are going to go through the same process. So, you know, all these workshop that's, that's coming in, you guys have to, uh, you know, attend those workshops and find out what's more, you know, what is more, you know, can be, you know, that can be done. So, um, yeah, so as I said, I got, you know, you know, my son, you know, he's, he's open for, he hasn't got his number one pick yet, but, you know, he's, you know, but we do get some offer, you know, and, you know, the one that we got was just totally ridiculous. And, uh, you know, but as I said, it's not his number one pick. And, but, you know, it was an offer, which we're, we're happy he got one off, he got an offer, but, you know, you know, the, you know, the funding that they're saying is just completely ridiculous. And, you know, they're like pushing you to get more, um, I'm actually looking at it right now, you know, they're pushing you to get more loan and I'm pushing back and said, no, we're not taking any more loan. And I'm trying, you know, to get that to be much less um, as possible. So please read that letter over, look it over, make sure you understand it, everything. And uh, as I said, don't just take it. I mean, even if even if you like the, you know, you you, you like what they gave you, yeah, still fight for more. You know, just you know, just for the you know for the sake of doing it. You know, that, you know, let them know that you know. It can be done. So, and I know there's universities out there that do offer a, a great um, funds that, you know, that's there. And they're just not using it for, you know, for everyone. And so, you know, my whole life, if I get another offer, I'm, just, I'm technically going to just say, look, I got this from this other school. And, you know, we're thinking of going to that one. So, look, you, you know, sorry. And, you know. Do that. It, you know, as I said, they only can say no to you. You know, they can't resend the offer. That's the whole point. They cannot resend it. So, you know, it's all up to you guys. And uh, for senior parents, please just don't take, you know, just take it sitting there. Just, you know, fight for more. 
even if you don't want it, fight for more, regardless of what. And so, you know, I need more. So that's why I'm fighting for more. And so please do, you know, and, uh, you know, this will be great for, you know, understanding, you know, what's going on, um, you know, so Lincoln, please do that. Yes. I, I see in um, participants that we have um, a, a Dalen Reed. Is that yes. a speaker? Yes. Thank you, please. Yes, Dalen Reed. That is Dr. Hello. Reed. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Hello, hi. Hi, Dr. Reed. Yes, Dr. So, Reed. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm trying to connect to you. Um, uh, yes, if you give me a second. Sure. Yeah, so um, how how is everyone? We're good. Um, we're all here waiting for you. And, you know, I was talking to everyone, trying to give them courage, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, about senior parents and, you know, the letter that I received, except the letter that I got, which was, uh -huh. I consider ridiculous, you know, um, you know, because, you know, you couldn't distinguish between what's a loan. I, I couldn't distinguish what, so, you know, between a loan and the grant. I mean, it's clear, but, you know, it, it was kind of, uh -huh. you know, yeah, you, you have to read it like several times to figure it out. But you know, as I do, I usually call and tell them, "Look, explain this to me." And they were happy enough to go through, you know, line by line. And I had them on for like uh, forty-five minutes on the phone to go line by line with my acceptance letter and you know, financial aid. They were they went through, and then once you know, once I got to the loan, I said, "Okay, there yeah, that 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 loan is that's ridiculous." You know, I need the grant to be increase so uh, you know and they said okay they're looking to it and get back to me um next week so um yeah let's see if i get more grant and uh, you know basically what i'm telling all parents to do is regardless of the fact just senior parent just look at the acceptance letter if you don't understand something ask you know go there tell them that you want do it line by line that's what i did just go through let them go through it line by line and, uh, you know, and you figure out what's a grant and what's a loan. That's what I needed to figure out. What was a grant and what was a loan? And once I figure, once they tell me what the loan amount was, I said, no, 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 no. We have to, we got to do some change. We got to do some switch around on that one. I wish it would be the reverse, but it's not going to be fully the reverse. But I know, um, according to them, they will do, you know, they do something. They'll do something for us. So, you know, as I said, they only can say no to you. They can't resend you. They cannot resend your your um your offer. They only can say no. They won't give you more money. But you know they want you. They will. They will find a way. Okay. So Dr. Reed, it's all you now. Yes. Hi everyone. Hello. Um, I'm not sure if you are able to give me the ability to share the screen or. Yes, we can. Um, to see if I can open up. I'm mine. gonna make you host here. Give me a second. Uh, Kim, are you around? Uh, yep, I got it. I got it. Thanks, Kim. Let me see. Like that. I think this is going to work. Just, just have to scroll I down. can. Um, yeah, I don't see. While we are working on the technical, uh, I just want to say hello to everyone. And I see another colleague of mine, Dr. Rhonda Cambridge. And I don't know if she is as a parent. Um, yes, Dr. Reed, I'm a parent. It's can't so can't believe it's you. real baby it's so big already. Yes, yes. It's so good to see you. Oh, my God. So, you know, um, I am so old that this lovely woman used to be my fellow. So in the hospital. So like I've been in Brooklyn <laughs> for a good 20 blah, blah, blah. I don't want to tell you how long. Um, it's nice to see you and, um, you know, you might be familiar with what we, um, what I'm doing right now. Okay. But, um, if not, I'm glad that you actually can, can participate and see this. So, um, this is um, a little presentation on a service that your school has. It's called CATCH service or Connecting Adolescents to Comprehensive Healthcare. 
Um, I'm a physician, one of the supervising doctors that works for Office of School Health for Department of Health. And uh, I happen to be one provider that actually comes to your school group in tech twice a month to see students, uh, you know, usually supervise a team that works for CATCH and for the, all the high schools in Brooklyn, public schools in Brooklyn and the nursing teams that work in them, you know, with them. Um, you know, and uh, this, is, this is one effort that I really enjoy that I actually get to uh, work with the students one-on-one -on -one as well. And this is at your school. And uh, so what is catch exactly, right? So let me just um, move about. Okay, let's see if this is gonna work. Yes. Um, so the catch, uh, it has a like little bit longer background, let's say. Uh, it has been, um, uh, in work since 2006 that the Center of Economic Opportunity created um, uh, something to, to kind of uh, innovate and level the anti-poverty programs basically. And um, it, there were reports that teen pregnancy was directly linked to the poverty. Uh, and um, they started the action to kind of include some of the uh, school-based health centers, you know, to, in 2007. Um, and those schools-based health centers are actually um, coming from the, as an effort from the um, hospitals and the healthcare systems that are operating in a New York City area. And um, in the New York City, like um, basically um, at some point at 2007 uh, to June to, to 2021, um, 130 school-based health centers were serving New York City middle and high school students. And they were offering comprehensive reproductive health services in a primary care setting. But you know, with that, um, a lot of high schools did not have the services. So 36% of high school students um, you know, have the accents, but the others have not. Uh, and this is where um, in, um, I believe about 10 years ago now in January uh, 2011, you know, that um, the Office of School Health, actually, and your Department of Health established CATCH program uh, that I will tell you about and uh, to be to kind of expand uh, the access for the timely reproductive care for the uh, for the students. Um, and um, in in the meantime, so. So now uh, we have, it's not so big altogether, let's say, you know, because I oversee 130 standalone high school and Brooklyn itself has 170 high schools. Some of those high schools are covered by school-based health centers and therefore under NYU or SIGN or whatnot. So um, I oversee uh, 130 standalone high schools in New York, and uh, we have 19 sites uh, or 19 high schools have a privilege to actually have a catch services. Um, and, um, um, you know, so it's not that many, but uh, a good thing that when you combine um, all the efforts, um, you know, and that we can say that uh, in uh, from 2018 to 19 school year that there were 58 par participating school campuses and that we were serving 78,000 students. I mean, it still is a good number. Um, of course, um, I would, you know, we would all like to be present in more places. And I guess, you know, with the pandemic, uh, setting this work a little bit at the standby, you know, now we are hoping that we will have this uh, access and, 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 uh, and the chance to, to establish this. 
further, right? So at, at this point, we think that about 71% of, um, of currently actively sexually active female students do use a catch program in the, in the, in the high schools and they, they can receive a birth control there. Okay, so let me see. So what do we actually uh, offer? Um, so we offer health education, which is really important, you know, um, um, about everything. Um, and we have a health educators that actually work at each site. Uh, they cover a couple of sites, uh, some of them. And uh, they could be potentially visible in, in a high school, um, uh, then that they will actually talk to the students and give and answer their questions. Um, and um, all the services are, you know, confidential because they are reproductive health services and by the New York state law, um, we are, you know, obliged to keep the information um, between the students um, and, uh, and providers, uh, private and confidential. The, even the records are confidential from DOE, so it's completely private for them. Um, and, um, you know, they, if they have a, a, a need, they can actually reach out to us. And we just not, you know, it's not that we are just offering services on site, but we also can connect them to the reproductive and other healthcare services that are in their local area and um, provide the counseling. Now, parents have, of course, a uh, right to opt out of this, uh, of this program in about 3.5% of parents will at times uh, opt out, but you know, students do have a uh, right by the law to ask questions. And I always think it's good to have um, a responsible adult answering those questions rather than uh, random nervous internet searches and other things that, that can happen. Um, so now um, if, um, if you like, I just, try to find a couple of um, frequently asked questions uh, that, you know, so, but, so you would know who and, and what's going on exactly. So this is basically Office of School Health that is providing uh, catch services. Uh, these services are free and confidential um, and they are limited to reproductive care, but um, providers that are uh, there, um, you know, these are first is uh, like their nurses that they know. So they have two nurses in the medical room um, and one of them is catch trained nurse. Um, and uh, the physician or nurse practitioner usually step in uh, as help um, and, you know, and they come to the school uh, twice a month. So this is a, like a huge advantage from other schools because most of the time all the schools would have a nurse or two uh, at the, in the medical room to handle day-to-day -day things at the school, chronically sick kids and you know other issues that might arise and support them. Uh, in, this, in this situation they actually have a physician that is their more or less direct resource because as we know you know, physicians and the nurses, you know, they, they build a team and, uh, and therefore they will contact, you know, the doctor, not just with the issues that are related to the reproductive care, but other things as well uh, when they need. And the doctor is present in the school at least twice a month, in, let's say in your school, in some schools once a month. Uh, you know, and considering that we are usually covering a huge territory and the field doctors, you know, often uh, will visit other schools as well, but they will not be there uh, so frequently, you know, it might happen that in one semester they will be able to, to visit each school once, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a significant uh, difference and um, that is, you know, if you are asking what the benefits does CATCH program offer, 
to the students in the school. This is definitely one. The other one is, as I said, you know, that it takes a village uh, to raise teenagers, you know, um, and uh, definitely it's good that they are, if they have issues, if they are in trouble, if they are feel anxious or they are not able to talk about certain things that they have providers uh, that they can reach and and talk to. You know, Dr. Dr. Cambridge will actually second me on that, on that I'm sure. Um, uh, the other uh, very good benefit actually is that the CATCH program itself also has a mental health uh, director, social worker, that is a mental health director of the program. And uh, if, and in case that, that during the screening, you know, that we feel that the child has any issues or um, um, might have uh, needs, um, to, to be connected to some counseling or something, we can actually provide the guidance for the student and the parent uh, in that case. Um, and so what are specific um, reproductive uh, services that we offer? I mean, you know, uh, we basically offer, first of all, uh, the counseling that helps them make informed decision and you know what their options might be um you know then as well uh some of the services are on site um and some of those uh, options are on site like the the birth controls that they can actually receive when they are uh, from the barriers to the hormonal and some of them are not on site, and but they can be connected to the outside agency that will help them to provide um, for 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 whatever their needs are. And uh, what, what if I do not want my child to receive these catch services? You can actually opt out. You know, so at the beginning of the school year. Uh, when you are signing the paperwork for your child to participate in a, in a medical room, there is also um, a paperwork that um, includes the CATCH program and reproductive services. And if you uh, will place that uh, you want your child not to be seen, then your child is not going to be seen. But, you know, the child can always come and ask questions. I mean, no one, you know, we cannot uh, and we will always on, um, answer them honestly as we would for uh, with the full responsibility as for every every work that we do. So um, so for the students, I don't know if there are any students here that or that there are somebody in the background of the parents uh, listening to this. Um, if they need any if they need anything, they have to just ask the nurse. Uh, in the school. Uh, their two nurses' names are Michelle and Naomi. They probably know them and they can always go and talk to them and see what, what, what they can, um, what they need. Uh, as I said, the services are confidential. No one will tell you that you ask questions and I think this is very good. And um, um, and then you will be seen by a trained MD or nurse practitioner. And in this, in your case, actually by adolescent medicine specialist, which is a rare thing anyway. Um, and what I also want to say is that um, one thing about group in tech, the kids are fantastic. They're smart, they are driven. Um, they are very focused on their education. And uh, like uh, they don't like to miss school and classes and tests. And uh, we always try to work around their schedules and help them, um, you know, not to miss those classes and things that they need to do for the education because this is a priority. And uh, I think it's really unique and really good that we are present at the school and so they can have this um, opportunity. So this would be like all from me. Um, if you have any questions and um, or anything that you would like to ask. Yes, I got a question. So um, each student have the option to opt out or is that just automatically given? 
or the 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 uh, parents are those that sign the consent, right? And the students don't have to take the services, of course. They they are not. No one is forced to. You know, they it's on. Um, how will I say? Parents have the uh, ability to opt out, and students can take the information and they don't have to participate. That's okay. the answer. They don't have to participate. No one is asking or forcing anyone to, but it's just there in the school, right? With the adolescents in general, um, the services are just available and that's what is important. So who needs it, they can ask for it and who doesn't need it, doesn't have to even, doesn't have to, you know, look that way. Thank you. Anyone else? Anything else? I see there's an in the chat. Oh gosh, let me see. I didn't. Yeah. I'm going to stop the share so I can look at the chat and all that. I'm sorry. I This pandemic should have like taught me this technology. Let me see. No, that's okay. Okay. All right, thank you, Dr. Reed. Um, um, do you I see don't see anything me? in the chat at the moment. Kim, did you see anything? Did I miss something? Yeah, Dr. Cambridge, uh, it's, it's, thank you for saying hi. And um, does the school provide standard health ed? Uh, yes, I think your school does provide standard. I actually spoke with some of the students to ask them about it. And we talk, we actually communicate with, you know, with um uh, with APs and and the, the school staff, so uh, there are health aid teachers, and yeah, they they provide health ed. Um, and you know, I'm also available, uh, considering that I'm a specialist for lesson medicine. So you know, to the health ed teachers, if they uh, want, you know, me, to include me in any of the classes or or discussions with students, I would be more than willing to do so. Okay, uh, any other question for Dr. Reed? Yeah, there's a, there's a question that do you provide a contraception? Yes, that's what I was talking about. I don't oh, okay. know. Yeah, Great. how that was missed. But it, there is, I think there was a slide which would say, hopefully, that there is a contraception on site. And there is also contraception that is not on site. You know, there are so many co different contraceptives these days that uh, you know, you might, we, we don't have everything available in the schools, but, you know, we are all medical providers that are trained. Uh, I'm a, as an adolescent specialist, I'm a gynecologist as well. So, you know, other people are also trained in uh, uh, reproductive care. Uh, so therefore, um, and we can also refer the uh, students that need to be seen. I mean, New York has a lot of um, free services for students um, and for teenagers. Um, and, um, you know, but if, if they need something, they have to take off and go there. And it's, uh, you know, this way, you know, it's available at the school. And I think it's really convenient. And it's good because it builds a certain relationship with the nurse that they trust, you know, to and know from other um, other ways of dealing. Um, and, you know, so it's like, it's birth control that can be used, uh, you know, not just to um, help and, um, to prevent pregnancy, but also, you know, in a menstrual disorder treatments and things like that, right? So there are different uses of it. Um, and uh, sometimes it, it's helpful. Any, do you have any other? Uh, it's important for his to have access to this. So thank you, thank you. Yes, it's, I, feel, I really believe that. All right, um, any other questions? Rhonda, it was super nice to see you. Um, same here, Dallin, same here. Yeah, I don't want to occupy your time too much. Uh, you may, you probably have other things to talk about. 
Uh, if you need me to help you with any health related things, you actually have an expert within your group. So you might call on her as well. Okay. Um, you know, but um, so, you know, you are, you, are, you are actually very well equipped at this point. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Reed. Yeah. Thank okay. you so much. Yes, Thank we didn't you. know. I, I doubt many of us knew much about this. Thank you so much for, for taking your time tonight. Yes, no, welcome. It's a pleasure. You, I mean, you really have a nice kid. It's a pleasure to work with them. I love seeing them every every like two weeks. I'm, I'm in the Brooklyn Tech. Uh, they're very good. They're very conscientious. They're very organized. It's a pleasure. It's a rare group of children. Anyway, okay, I will uh, say bye to all of you if you don't have anything else. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, bye-bye. Okay, bye. Okay, um, I'm looking for Mr. Newman to see if he's on. Um, yes, um, uh, Mary said that that he he's traveling and he's still um, he's still in a meeting. He was trying to get here, but I okay. think I think that his meeting ran later than he expected. All right. Okay, folks. Um, do me a favor. Send me all your questions, and I will get to uh, uh, Mr. Newman tomorrow. And uh, I will, you know, give him the questions you, you have and I will email you guys back his answer. Yeah, maybe um, we could just, maybe we could get it into Tech Talk, you know. I would get it in Tech Talk. We could yeah. do both. We're basically going to do both. Okay. So, yeah, we apologize for that. It just sometimes meetings run longer than, than expected. All right. So um, I'm willing to adjourn the meeting until next meet next time. And Dr. Rhoda, now that I know you're <laughs> you're on, so I got a lot of questions for you coming up. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. So all right. So send me all your questions, and I will get them to uh, Mr. Newman. Uh, okay. Um, the meeting. I'm I'm gonna adjourn the meeting. Um, do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Third. Thank you, Kim and Shandy. Thank you guys all. And I will see you guys at the next meeting. And please um, remember, look through the bylaw. Get back to me if you do need, if you see something um, that you guys want change or don't understand, please get in touch with us and we get back in touch with you. Okay. Thank you all. And have a good night.